So let's see the statement which describes Gay-Lussac law and it says at constant volume, we know the pressure of a fixed amount of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature. As the temperature would increase, you know that the pressure would also increase and vice versa, right? Have a look right here. What we are doing, we are increasing the temperature. What you can see is the molecules of the gas. They start hitting each other. They start colliding each other. They collide the walls of the container. They collide with each other. And what happens is the kinetic energy increases and in turn, the pressure of the gas increases. Have a look. So P is directly related to temperature. P is directly proportional to temperature. Let's now see the mathematical expression for this. Have a look. P directly related or directly proportional to temperature. Of course, V and N are constant. Let's remove this proportionality sign. What will come? A constant will come, of course. So, if we remove the proportionality sign, P is equal to K3T. Why am I writing K3 here? Because this is the third law that we are talking about. Hence, I've written K3. But you can understand, I can write simply K and it works. Right? What will this constant depend on? Ma'am, obviously what we are keeping as constants, we are keeping volume and moles constant. It is what it will depend on, isn't it? Then, of course, if I take this temperature in the denominator, what do we get? Pressure by temperature as a constant, isn't it? So, we can easily say that P1 T2 is equal to P2 T1. So, Gay-Lussac law, you know what to apply, right? Let's now look at the graph for Gay-Lussac's law. So, the graph looks something like this. Can we check? Everybody, you already know that volumes are constant. So, we are taking different isocores. So, we are taking different plots. Each plot that you can see, the blue, the green, the yellow, the light blue out here, all are taken at a constant volume and we have plotted the pressure and temperature. What we realized is that as the pressure is increasing, the temperature is increasing, okay? Or let's say as the temperature is increasing, the pressure is increasing, isn't it? Right? So, pressure and temperature are directly proportional to each other. So, P is directly proportional to T. You can very well see. Can I test you by asking you, V1 is greater than V2, is greater than V3, is greater than V4, or it is V4 greater than V3, greater than V2, greater than V1, or is it V1 is equal to V2, is equal to V3, is equal to V4? Ma'am, at least the smart smartness we have gained that it is not option C. I believe so. The smart smartness is gained. So, out of A and B, if you have understood C cannot be the answer because these are different volumes that we are taking, right? So, of course, have a look. You have to tell me out of A and B, which is the right volume relation. What you can simply do is, you can make any one of the things constant, either pressure or temperature. Let's take temperature constant. Temperature constant, Bt, right? Boyle's law temperature constant. As the temperature is constant, what happens? As the pressure increases, the volume decreases. So, we have pressure 1 coming here. Pressure 2 coming here, pressure 3 coming here, pressure 4 coming here, right? You can see that pressure 1 is maximum and pressure 4 is minimum. Yes, ma'am, we can observe it. So, what do we do? As, the, as we know, as the pressure is more, pressure increases. Look at this, volume should be least. 
So the order of volume should be obviously just the reciprocal, just the opposite of the order of the pressure at constant temperature. So V4 should be greater and V1 should be least. So the right answer should be the B part that I've written that V4 is greater than V3, which is greater than V2. And then we have V1. Cool, simple. Okay. So ISO course, we have understood different ISO course. Let's now just clean a bit. Also, I would like to tell you that most of these gas laws, you would see that they do not start from origin for simple reasons, right? That when we are saying temperature, let's say zero in Kelvin, that's unattainable. When we say, let's say uh, volume zero, which is again unrealistic, pressure zero, again, very difficult to attain and next to impossible also at times because complete vacuum creation is very difficult to create, right? So general conditions we always take and hence you will see that on extrapolation, the graph will meet the origin, but not otherwise. Otherwise, the best and the good practice is to show the graphs not starting from origin. So be careful, all right? Wherever it is so. So be careful wherever it is so. Now we know that pressure, J. Gay-Lussac law, volume constant, as we increase the pressure, the temperature increases or vice versa. So if I simply take P by T, what will be the graph looking like? We understood P versus T. Simply, now we see this P by T versus P or T. What do you observe? is a straight line. Straight line parallel to the x-axis signifying simple thing that P by T is equal to constant. Okay, doesn't depend on pressure or temperature, right? Well, if I ask you where all do you see Gay-Lussac's law, let's talk about the applications, right? So in applications, let's understand how actually we can imagine this scenario in a pressure cooker. So in pressure cooker, let's assume that volume is constant of the container of this pressure cooker. Okay. Let's assume the number of moles are also constant. Okay. The number of gas molecules inside are constant. But you know that as the temperature increases, the pressure would increase. Hence the name pressure cooker. The pressure would increase. Now, what will the pressure cooker do to dissipate that pressure? It has a whistle. And since the pressure increases multifold, what happens is you listen to that whistle, it comes up, and what do you see? You hear a sound, hence you hear a whistle, and from there the molecule starts escaping. Okay? So, please understand. When we are talking about molecules start escaping, the moles have started changing now. But we are talking, let's say that the initial condition when the temperature was increasing, the pressure starts increasing to such an extent that this is what it leads to. It leads to the coming out of the gas molecules from inside the container in a form of whistle it makes, right? 